Satan rules this world, and by design, he wants everything anti-Christ. So what is promoted in these end days? Abort your kid, have as much sex as you want, cut off your genitals, transgenderism. And I know it sounds like, who are we to say this? Dude, I can't make this up. This is all anti-Christ. And you want to know how you know it's anti-Christ? Because when you go to those parades, the pride parades or whatever it is, those people don't fear Muslims. They don't fear Allah. They don't fear Buddhists. But when you bring up Jesus Christ, it triggers them. Certainly some interesting ideas. You know, I, I do pray to Jesus sometimes. Oh, good, man. I, I, I see him calling you, bro. So are all these things stuff you don't support? Well, we can't support them, right? If we're born, is it recording? Yep. If we're born again believers, right? Which I said, we must be born again. Um, these, these are all sins, right? Now, of course, we're all gonna fall short. I will, right? I'm gonna look at a woman with lust. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 20, even if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery, right? But if we're born again, we begin to love the things God loves and hate the things God hates. But I need to make it clear, right? Just because I have this here doesn't mean I hate these individuals. Everyone can become born again, right? What do you that, think? I guess that would make sense in the context of your religion. Yeah, but it's not even a religion, right? It's it's the way of life. I mean, we live in a Christian country, and what I mean by that is our backbones are, are Judeo-Christian. We're in the year 2024 after whose death? Jesus Christ. So the reality is, you know, I was I'm not part of a church. I was not I'm not Catholic. I'm not religious. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is is, is very real, and, and that's what built our entire society. And that's why people immigrate here, refugees, for our freedoms. Our, the, the law is heavily dictated on the Bible, right? This is why people don't go move to the Middle East or China, right? Because we're predominantly a Christian nation here, Europe, the West. So that's what we're here just to explain, right? But we do love all individuals, man. Like I'm not condemning anyone to hell. No, we're we're saying, here's how you become born again, right? That's why it's good you're here, man. I'm sure to explain it. I was just curious about what the sign was about, to be honest. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Do you, do you what, what do you disagree with? And maybe I can explain it a little bit better. Because it's more than just the sign. I made this sign to, you know, to trigger, but it doesn't just have to be the sign. I don't really know. I mean, I can get an idea of what each point kind of sure. goes over. Sure. Uh, maybe liars and thieves. I don't really support those. Yeah. yeah. You can't really, because if. If you do support that, then yeah. your society crumbles. Yeah. Drinker and smoker. Uh, I don't Depends, know if that, yeah. I don't know if that's explicitly a, sure. a a bad thing. Yeah. But so here, you probably I, shouldn't do it. Yeah. So here's what I'll say, okay? So the Bible says that if we fall short, if we break even one law, we're guilty of them all, right? Um, so the problem is, and this is where Jesus comes in the picture, okay? I'm, I'm going to explain a, a judge analogy, how the Bible, how the gospel works. If I go to a judge right now, and let's say I stole something. What is the judge going to do? He's going to say, hey, man, you got caught. You deserve a fine, right? So that's, that's how it works in the Bible. If we've broken even, see, God's law is much higher than our law. Our law is, well, you know, I didn't kill or rape anyone, therefore I'm going to heaven. But God says, hey, man, if you even, like, like I said, look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery in your heart. So because we deserve hell, a punishment, Jesus comes in as the middleman, the lawyer who says, hey, God, I know you want to, uh, you know, persecute him, but I'm going to pay his bail, but he must follow me. So we have historical evidence of Jesus living 2,000 years ago, 500 eyewitnesses, 25,000 manuscripts. Jesus is the most studied person in the world, much far past any other religious figure combined. Now, we live in a secular society where they're not going to teach you this because they want all of us to perish, right? Satan, this is biblical now, Satan rules this world and he wants everyone to go to hell. Now, I believe, and I think most people do, that we're in the end days. I think it's kind of evident, and we know we're in the end days because the only thing promoted now is this. So I used to do all this, man. I was a drinker, I was a porn watcher, I, all this stuff. But like I said, once we become born again, right? And I can explain in a second how we become born again. Um, what God says is he removes our heart of stone and gives us a heart of flesh, and he gives us his spirit. So naturally, our mindset changes, our thoughts, our behaviors, and again, Again, dude, I'm gonna fall short. We're all gonna fall short. It's not about being perfect. Jesus was perfect, not of us. But we we begin to feel convicted. Like you know what? I I, I shouldn't do this. I should begin to live more righteously. So I love LGBTQ people. But the problem, man, is that if God says it's a sin, we it's very scary for us to um encourage that, encourage any sin. And I know it's harsh because it's like, who are you to judge? Well. Well, this is God's law. I mean, I can't condemn anybody, but we're here to save them out of the fire. The most loving thing to do is say, hey, man, become born again. Get out of the fire opposed to, hey, you live your best life, pride month, do whatever. You actually, no, you're going to hell. No, 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 no. You're on like a conveyor belt to being slaughtered. I got to pull you out, but we're going to be hated in doing that. Does that make sense? Because I had someone very close to me who was into homosexuality her entire life. And once she became born again, right? It's very important. It's not about being religious or Catholic or going to church. No, no, no. That can help. Once she was born again, her desires changed. Same with my pastor was a very, my old pastor, very heavy drug addict, heroin, um, 
Yeah, so does that kind of help a little bit? If you have questions, man, let me know because a lot of people don't understand the true gospel because it's watered down here, it's not explained properly, and I would hate, I'm commanded to go and spread the gospel to all creation. It's, it's, it's Mark 16, 15, I have to do it. So if I don't, your blood is on my hands. Imagine me, it was just like, ah, whatever, he'll figure it out, hopefully. Mm. Oh. I mean, I can choose to follow my own path. I don't necessarily think that puts my blood on your hands. You're, you're doing your best here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, 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 would you, what would you say is your path? My path? Well, I, I don't necessarily ascribe to an established religion. Yeah. I do believe in a God, yeah. something higher than sure. everything. Uh, my belief is that our purpose in life is to serve the will of creation, to propagate okay. the will of creation. Okay. Can I, can I rebuttal that? Sure. Okay, great. And, and I want you too, man, if, you know, again, I'm not going to be offended if you have like a deep question, right? So the problem with that, right, the problem is if we don't have the absolute morality from the Bible, and I just say, because I was like that too, I was into kind of new age, you know, universe, I believe that there was a power, and that's actually, God says that too in Romans 1, we all believe that there's a God, but we suppress it. The problem with not this, without having this absolute morality, is that it begins to become subjective. So I'll give you an example. What if Hitler has an example? He said, you know, killing these people is me serving my creation. Right? This is, this is like abortion. This is, it really is a very slippery slope where it becomes subjective and then we're able to live however we want. I do actually have a rebuttal to that yeah. in that I do actually have a solid moral foundation. Yeah. So in my little goofy little religion, because it's based off of what I observe in the universe. Okay. It's not going to be based on entirely on your religions. Okay. My, my religion, if you could call it that, sure. is... There's a creator, yeah. and then there's an equal and opposite destroyer. Sure. Kind of like karma, almost. I guess you could look at it that way. I don't know too much about karma. Okay. But good and evil, to my perspective, is defined by that which propagates creation yep. and that which propagates destruction. Okay. If you propagate destruction, sure. you are trending towards evil. Sure, sure. Okay. But again, though, that's subjective, because what if I'm a pedophile and I say, well, you know, raping little kids... That's okay with me because a lot of pedophiles believe this. What if I, sorry, what if I, that's okay, bro. What if I kill somebody, right, as an example, and I say, you know, he deserved it though. Without an absolute morality, this is what I'm saying, it becomes very slippery. And that's what the Bible is. It's an absolute morality. Is it it's still good? Does that kind of help? Because I was like that. It's, trust me, it's a slippery slope. Like, you, now I'm essentially taking over your word over my word, right? Like those individuals, I'm sure they think, you know, Maybe a bunch of sex is okay, but what if the Bible is a clear cut? Well, it's not until marriage. Then we're just playing a game of semantics, kind of like, well, you know, well, my. Go ahead. I think it's easy, to, or it's easier than you might think to look at a scenario and think, all right, is something trending towards creating new things, sure. or is it trending towards destroying things? Sure. You gave up. You gave the example of like, you know, a pedophile. You yeah. Know, taking advantage of a young child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see how that benefits creation. That can only destroy. Yeah. I, well, I agree with you, man. So I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that God's law is written into all of our hearts, even the pedophiles. Um, so we all know that there's a God, and we all, this is what our, 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 atheism cannot explain morality. So when I steal something, even as a child, I feel guilt. I feel shame. Even if my parent doesn't teach me this, the Bible says it's because God's law is written to all of our hearts. So we know, you know, when I watch these websites, or I do these things. It's not ideal, and that's because God's law is written. But the problem then comes into the picture is that some people have a seared conscience. They have, they're given over to a debased mind, which means they no longer oh, feel what? that. Uh, in the Bible, it's a debased mind is kind of like, like they're given over to their affection, where God essentially, their conscience becomes seared. They no longer feel that conviction. And that's really scary because then they can rape or steal or murder. I mean, I know you see, like, we see what's going on in the world, and they don't feel that it's wrong, like what you're saying. That's, that's where we need actually to bring in the Bible, and the law was heavily dictated off the Bible, the Ten Commandments, right? Like, that's why if you steal something, it's not good. If you murder, well, where do you think that came from? So if we really do begin to dig it back deep enough, we actually realize that morality stems from the Bible. It's not the Quran, it's not the, um, the Vedas, and if you want, I can explain why. And, and, and so your morality is actually piggybacking off the Bible, but what we do, and this is what I did, is we kind of just like give it our own spin. And the problem with that is that we're not God, though. You know, we're, we're actually, in that sense, we're actually kind of playing God. Does that make sense? That is true. Uh, in terms of morality, it's, it's yeah. hard to... It's, it's hard to think about. It, yeah. Because yeah. it's a very broad subject, and there's a lot of subjectivity to it. Well, there is, but there isn't. The Bible makes it very clear it's yes or no, right? That's why it's so good we have the Bible. If we didn't have that, then I agree with you. It's a broad, gray area. God's actually very black and white. Now, we all fall, but this is great you said this. We all fall short. I deserve jail, hell. I, I deserve punishment, but 
windy days, eh? But that's that, but that's where Christ comes into the picture. So because he was sinless, he was the sacrificial lamb, he fulfilled 300 plus prophecies in the Old Testament alone to a T. Um, once I'm born again and I follow him, he pays my bail. But without him, I go to hell because I've broken the law. But the problem, man, is that the majority, and these are great questions, the majority of people think that, but I'm good though, I'm, I'm a good person. I didn't, I didn't kill anybody, I'm going to heaven. But that's, that's our standard, that's not God's standard. But we can all become born again and through that, I'm not saying, bro, you gotta be like this monk in the hill and like you can never talk to a woman. No, that's not what I'm saying. When you're born again, your desires begin to change. This is called the sanctification process and it's very real. And mil you can search this up, don't take my word. Millions of people around the world are having the exact same experiences. So it's kind of like, is this made up? It's not made up, right? Because I, I was born again two years ago. Just give my testimony real quick, is that okay? So two years ago, I was, when I was saved, I was born again. I, before that, I was fornicating. I was with my girlfriend for five years. I was living like the normal, I'm a good guy life. But then she broke up with me one day. And after she broke up with me, I was very humbled. I was very like, whoa, I thought I was gonna marry this girl, right? And for the first time, the Bible says in Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I'm God. For the first time, I was still. No dopamine, no like crazy stimulus. And I felt this undeniable, John 6, 44, Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the Father draws. And I felt this like, this drawing. And I was like, what the heck? I was like atheist at this point. And I looked at my window, because God's law was written in my heart. I knew it was God. I said, God, Jesus, whatever you are, universe, I don't really believe in you, but if you are real, I'll follow you, but guide me. And from that point, I became born again. And that's what the Bible tells us, right? But, and this is the last verse I'll say, and I'm gonna let you go. But the Bible says that if we're not born again, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, the natural man, atheist, universe, whatever, myself, right? Kind of all of us. The natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. It's foolishness to him because he's not spiritually discerned. If you're not born again, the Bible is a fairy tale. It's a joke. It's, ah, it's just a white man's, this is the majority of people, right? This is me. Look at this man-made white man's religion, get out of here. But it's because you're not born again yet. This is why God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Is that gonna help? Well, like I said earlier, I do have some sort of religious concept. Yeah. I guess you could call it agnostic religion. Sure. I don't know what to label it. because okay. I don't follow an actual text. I don't sure. follow a book. Sure. I go based off what I observe in the entire universe on a completely grand scale. Yeah. And, you know, there was a moment of myself where there was a sort of spiritual awakening yeah. that yeah. pulled me towards this philosophy. Yeah. It might not be Christianity, sure. like you said, but, yeah. you know... Kind of new age almost. You know, I was thinking about these ideas in my head in a sort of atheistic point yeah. of view. Yeah. Thinking about morality yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I had a dream, sure. a dream where I was in some sort of, I guess, hallway from a school or something. Sure. I was looking for locker 799. Okay, that was okay. like a number repeating my okay, head. Okay. And I looked up that number because I was curious, because like, you know, it's kind of odd to yeah, have yeah. a number repeating yeah. in yeah. a dream. And it just said, it, I think the description online, I don't necessarily know if sure. it's anything to do with Christianity, yeah. but... You know, it's something like you're on the right path. Continue, I, I, I continue you're going. On the right path. So I'm just going to tell you what I think. Okay, I think God is drawing you as He's drawing everyone in the end days. In Acts two seventeen, it says, "In the end days, which is what we're in, God will draw, pour out His Spirit onto all creation." This is why, man, that a lot of people are waking up to God right now. I did two years ago. I'm not an accident. I have many people randomly on Instagram. I have a decent following. David, man, I was an atheist for so long. I had this vision about God. Why am I feeling pulled now? Well, it's because we're in the end days, and I believe that's what's happening to you right now. And what I would argue, man, is that anything that you're borrowing as far as your philosophy, your morality, is actually all piggybacking off the Bible, but you're mixing it in your own way. And eventually, if you keep, just keep digging, keep, you know, scratching, you will come to Christ and realize that this is what love is, this is what morality is, this is what truth is, and every, once born again, man, everything makes sense. Right? Everything. You can debate other religions. The Bible's bulletproof, dude. I, of course, I still have a lot more to learn, but any person that's come, I've yet to been disproved. And not because I'm some crazy smart guy, but because it's the truth. It's built everything that we look at. In fact, I could speak about how they found Noah's Ark, the remains. There's a, there's a ton of these things, which I know sounds silly to the natural man, because you have to understand, though, Satan rules this world, and by design, he wants everything anti-Christ. So what is promoted in these end days? Abort your kid, have as much sex as you want, cut off your genitals, transgenderism. And I know it sounds like, who are we to say this? Dude, I can't make this up. This is all anti-Christ. And you want to know how you know it's anti-Christ? Because when you go to those parades, the pride parades or whatever it is, those people don't fear Muslims. They don't fear Allah. They don't fear, and I've seen this, they don't, see, they don't fear Buddhists. But when you bring up Jesus Christ, it triggers them. So Ephesians 6, 12, the Bible says we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. There's a spiritual warfare going on. And to a lot of people, because they can't see it, they think it's, 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 it's BS, it's a joke. But it's not. And if you really dig deep enough, study Freemasonry, study elites, Freemason. I'm not going to go to a death, man, but they only attack Christ. Sure, you on TikTok, you see the whole Ryan Garcia thing with Bohemian, Bohemian Grove. 
It's coming out. Satan is not hiding. Search of the Grammys. Search up Hollywood. What is it against, man? Anti-Christ. It's not anti-Buddha, Muhammad. So it is there. And, and Satan, what's up, guys? Must be born again. Jesus saves. Amen. Must be born again. Yep. Okay. Amen. That's good. So if she genuinely is born again, that means she's saved. So that's what we're here to do. Does that kind of help? Man, you're a smart guy. I can see God's pulling you. There's no... I want to give you my card after. I want you... You're an intellectual dude, bro. You're a smart guy. You remind me of myself. When you come to Christ, dude, uh, your mind is just going to... Everything. They're, it's made out to seem like this white man's religion of these dumb Christians. They're the, if they're the smartest men alive. Trust me. Uh, Nikola Tesla, I mean, you can think of Charles Darwin, right? Or uh, what's his name? Richard Dawkins, right? The, the heaviest atheist. Even to himself, he said, uh, I'm 95 agnostic. No one's atheist. Nobody's atheist. Everyone, what they do, the Bible says, is they believe in the truth, but they suppress it with unrighteousness so they can live in sin. This was me. I keep fapping. I keep talking to girls, hooking up. Who are you to tell me, preacher? And they get angry. <laughs> this is what happens, bro. But if I preached anything else, they would walk on by. Well, that's how like a demon takes over your mind, right? Sure. The more you yeah. give in to, you know, whatever you refer to as sin, sure. you, you become, your soul becomes weaker. Exactly. It just absorbs you. Yeah. And then eventually, man, you know, even karma, new age, they all kind of, again, they steal from the Bible. They just say, oh, you know, you deserve punishment. You deserve bad karma. Well, just... All I'm saying, bro, is it all comes back to the Bible. If you st if you scratch it deep enough, new age breaks. It, it, it breaks. The ideas can't hold themselves up, right? Well, I don't necessarily know if I'm new age. I came to yeah, my but, ideas on my own. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean you necessarily, but just like this general kind of agnostic atheist believe in the universe. Because this is where everybody's at right now. They all believe in a God, but they're just calling the universe because that doesn't hold you accountable. This was me, bro, for five years. I was in a new age. I had a spiritual awakening, all this stuff, right? And I believed in the universe because it didn't hold me accountable. It wasn't holding a mirror up to me. As long as I did good, you know, I had good vibrations, good energy, I'm fine. But that's my standard. That's not the Bible standard. And now I cannot uphold the Bible standard. That's why we need Christ. Yeah. And once born again, bro, naturally everything changes. I've been, not that this really matters, but, but on no fat for five years, semen attention, I plan to be celibate till marriage. And it's not because my flesh was able to do that. No, my flesh would say, screw that. But the spirit within you convicts you. It, it actually changes you. Whether you're addicted to drugs, you just don't desire it anymore. And that's what we want for the LGBTQ people, the, the anyone, really anyone. The reason we target LGBTQ as one of those is because it's promoted. You cannot promote sin. Imagine if the, I, I know that these people are going to go to hell and they're just all dancing along to their conveyor belt. You search up the testimonies of LGBTQ people finding Jesus. 180 degree turn. The therapists don't do that 180 degree turn. The drugs don't do that 180 degree turn. Christ. Even in Alcoholics Anonymous, the first thing they tell you is, uh, do you accept that there is God, even if these are the hardest core atheists, because you know drug addicts, they can't, you, you can't fix it yourself. Your discipline can help you so far, but if you don't have Christ, you can't. Your, your willpower is weak. Our flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. It's strong. My flesh is weak, bro. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't be out here. I'd be embarrassed. I'd be like, eh. But when you're in the spirit, man, you're bold. You're powerful. That's why everyone. That's why they all died. The followers of Christ. What's up, man? You want to come chat after? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Just. Okay. Certainly some interesting ideas. Yeah. I don't necessarily know if yeah. my path is going to intersect with Christ. Your your religion. Don't even think of it as a religion. Born again believer of Christ. It's ether, it's air, it's all around us. It, it, I don't well, I worry mean, so much about the sign. There is evidence yeah. that Jesus existed, so yeah. I I can't really yeah, you know, no refute that. Can, yeah. But it's this resurrection did that actually happen. You know, I, I do pray to Jesus sometimes. Oh, good, man. I, I, I see him calling you, bro. So, I mean, uh, if you want, we can finish there. If, if you don't mind, can I pray for you? Is that okay? Oh, sure. Okay, I'll pray for you. I'll give you a card. Just watch the YouTube videos and just, just keep scratching. Because uh, we're in the end days, bro. And if, if, if God says, the angels in heaven say that they rejoice over winning one soul more than 10,000 righteous people who are, oh, yeah, I'm a good guy. No, 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 no. If they win one soul, oh, man, my, my day is complete. Done. Game over. Right? So, uh, what's your name again? I'm just gonna pray, okay? Uh, I'd rather keep my okay, name. Okay, okay, no problem. Was... Okay, I'm gonna say, my friend, Christ, I pray today that you reveal yourself to my friend here. You let yourself be known to him. Pull on his heartstring. Move towards him. Let yourself be known so he can accept you and you can give him your Holy Spirit. And from that, he becomes a brand new creation, walks in righteousness, and is then able to share the gospel with other individuals sharing the good news. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. It's good? finish there okay okay man cheers okay god bless yeah have a good one man